I spent $300 to enter a bass tournament on a lake that I haven't been to in 13 years and I've only fished a few days in my life. Can I figure out how to catch five bass that weigh 20 pounds in one day to beat the locals and win $6,000? I guess we'll find out. This is a lake break, a series devoted to answering the number one question I get, which is how do you find fish on a new body of water? I don't get help, I don't get information, I just put the boat in and go. Now my game plan when it comes to breaking down this body of water is I decided I wanted to target and look for isolated cover outside of spawning areas. Even though this lake is completely covered in grass and I absolutely love to fish grass, I thought with the limited practice period that I had, it would be best for me to target isolated cover like stumps in order to find some bigger than average bass. A lot of times when you are fishing grass, it just takes a while to find the right quality fish. So as soon as I put my boat in the water, I actually flipped on my electronics and all I did for about five hours was graph and look at my side imaging. Now I found a ton of stumps, rock piles and road beds and i fished a lot of them but the only thing that i caught on all those isolated pieces of cover were crappie but also while i was graphing i did graph over a small point and i could actually see a school of bass on the outside grass line on this point depending on what the bottom is that you are fishing sometimes bass will look like little white dots with a shadow close to them and sometimes they look like this which is kind of just like little pieces of rice on your side imaging after i saw this on my unit though i marked it and then i spun around and i cast over to that grass line with a big magnum trick worm unfortunately i thought my gopro was running and it wasn't but i actually made a cast to this school that was on the outside grass line and I actually got bit on the very first cast and ended up breaking off about a four pound largemouth. As I was sitting there rigging up a new worm on a new rod, that fish jumped like three or four times trying to shake the hook. But this fish actually got me pretty excited because it was a quality fish. It was a fish in that four pound range that I really wanted. And I knew that there was a group of them there. So I decided I wasn't even going to make another cast there. I simply hit the waypoint and decided to keep moving. And so at that point, five hours into the day, I decided, you know what? I need to start fishing grass. I need to go off of this clue that I just got, this four pounder, and try to find something in the grass. And that's exactly what I did and it really changed the day for me. Now real quick before we get back into the video, one of the absolute best ways to help support the Bass Fishing HQ channel is by shopping at my apparel company, finfishing.com. Right now for Memorial Day, I had everything on the website at 30% off, which is shirts, hats, some gloves. There's a number of items on there. So if you guys would like to help support the channel and help me bring more of these lake breaks to you, hit that link down there in the description and shop at Finn Fishing. Now, one thing that graphing did show me is that pretty much every time I got into about six to six and a half feet of water on this lake, that is when the grass would stop. A lot of times this is all based upon light penetration. If the whole body of water is pretty much the same water color, that light can only get down so far. And obviously plants need light to grow. So a cool trick that I did was on my Hummingbird Electronics, I actually used the depth shading and I set my shallow shading to six feet and I set my other depth shading to six to 10 feet. This roughly gave me a perfect view of the outside grass line that bordered the entire perimeter of this lake. The crazy thing was this was very accurate. Almost every single place that I pulled up on, I would stop about a hundred yards away from where the red line met the green line. And that is exactly where that grass would stop growing. This also really helped me to see points in ditches in the grass line which I could concentrate on instead of the long straight areas. So because I had that four pound bite on an outside grass line point I decided to focus on the points. Now looking at my map I saw this really defined good looking point where red met green and I knew that it would be a perfect little point outside of a spawning pocket for bass to potentially stage on before they went up to spawn. I pulled right up to this point and within a few casts I caught a keeper on a big worm. Try 
shit. But as I was looking down at my mega live unit, I noticed that there was a lot more bass in the area. So I proceeded to pick up a Berkeley Stunna jerkbait, one of my favorite jerkbaits ever, and cast it at some of the fish that I saw on my units. This fish catch right here, although it isn't a huge bass, it really opened up my eyes to knowing that I might be able to use my mega live units to cast to bass that I could see on my forward facing sonar. Now, one thing that I also saw on the mega live is although I had caught a few small keepers here, I did see a couple of bigger than average dots that were swimming around. So I marked this area so that I would come back and hit it during the tournament. From there, I moved up to the very next point. I mean, why go far if there are fish in the area? So I moved up to the very next point. I cast the big trick worm out there again and caught another keeper. But this time, as I was scanning around with my mega live, I did not see near the fish activity in life in this area. I went ahead and marked it anyways as a potential area to come back in during the tournament. I went ahead and leapfrogged up to the very next point right on that outside grass line. Again, that was very easy to see with my units. And I started casting around the big worm and the jerk bait to fish that I could see. Within about 10 minutes, I had caught a fish on that magnum trick worm. And then I proceeded to go ahead and catch a few more fish now as you can see a lot of the fish here aren't that big which is why I'm continually setting the hook if I were to pull up to one of these areas and catch a big one say three and a half four four and a half pounds then I would pretty much just leave that area to try to come back and fish it during the tournament but anytime you are fishing grass lakes a lot of times fish of the same caliber size will kind of school up with each other you will find certain areas where you're catching a lot of bigger fish then you'll find other areas where there's a ton of smaller fish although you never know where there might be one big one mixed in what i noticed is there was a lot of fish in this general area a lot of small fish a lot of life i was seeing bait all over the graph so i went ahead and marked this area even though i hadn't caught a big fish yet but then i did catch two fairly nice sized bass in the two and a half pound range which made me feel a little bit more confident that i could maybe come here and catch a 12 pound bag. Although 12 pounds is not going to win me anything, it's still nice to have an area where you can come, catch a limit, and then focus on bigger fish. Now, one thing that is a little bit different about this general area that I found is that the bass were not relating so much to the point of the grass, they were actually more relating to the gut of the grass. And what I mean by gut is this little funnel area right here. This is something that is tremendously overlooked by a lot of anglers because we all know that bass relate to points, but bass also relate to guts or ditches. These are really perfect funnel areas for bass to come from the main lake and go right up this gut into the spawning area where they will spawn. So now I started looking for points and guts all across the lake. Now, interestingly enough, I fished a ton of water. I hopscotched around all over the lake fishing points and guts and just trying to locate schools of fish. And after the success I had earlier doing this, I actually went for a long period of time without catching any fish at all, getting very few bites. I think there was maybe one or two other areas where I'd caught a fish, but it was typically only one fish and not even a really big one. However, there was this one area right here that I want you to keep in mind. I caught this solid keeper right here, and then within a few casts after catching this fish, I had one absolutely train wreck, a chatterbait, and so I knew that this might potentially be a good area. Something that I've noticed in practicing for tournaments, especially big tournaments like Bassmaster Open events, is that usually during practice, I am moving at a pretty fast pace. And if I can get multiple bites in a small area, that tends to mean there's actually a bigger group of fish in that general area. So anytime I have multiple bites, I always hit that waypoint in this area that I just showed you actually became really clutch for us late during the tournament day, which you'll see later in this video. Now, after fishing grass points and ditches for hours and only locating a few areas, I decided again to just try something that was a little bit different, maybe something that could yield me a big bite. So I actually moved way up shallow because I had fished deep. I kind of fished that mid range. And so I moved 
up on the bank and in really, really shallow water. I actually caught a small keeper in some pad stems. And then I actually used a floating worm to cover some spawning pockets. And I caught a lot of fish but they were primarily really, really small. But I felt like it was good for me to do that, to kind of get that out of my mind for the tournament day. Now, speaking of the tournament day, which I'm about to show you, I think it's really important as anglers to just analyze what type of fish that you are on before you get into that tournament. There are tournament practices where I know I'm around the winning fish. I, I'm catching bigger than average fish. I know that I can go out there and, and potentially catch the winning bag. There's also tournaments like this one where I didn't catch a lot of those big fish. So what I have found in those situations where I don't really feel like I'm around the winning caliber of fish is simply go out and catch as many bass as possible. The more bass that you catch, the higher that potential is of you catching that big one that might kind of set you over the edge or really boost you in the standing. So going into this tournament, I'd fish deep, shallow, and in between, and I knew that I was probably going to be focusing on the grass and just trying to catch as many fish as possible. So let's go ahead and jump into the tournament day. The morning of the tournament, it was raining uncontrollably hard. I mean, absolute just soaking us out there in the water. So you will have to forgive me because I did not have my cameras on until a little bit later in the morning. Now, the first area that I decided to go to was the area that I knew had a ton of fish in it. it is where I caught a lot of fish on jerk baits and big worms. And I immediately went to that area, the little gut, to try and catch as many fish as I could, hoping to come away with a small limit. Now, just like pretty much every tournament goes, what I want to happen doesn't happen. And once we got to this first area, I did not catch a single fish. After about a half hour of fishing in this general area, my tournament partner actually caught the first keeper, which was a 1.8 pound fish. Again, I do not have this on camera. Now, after fishing this area for about another 20 minutes after my partner caught a fish, I decided to move to that one point where I had seen some fish on my Mega Live during the practice period. Now, something that I like to do when it actually comes to tournament fishing is I'm not going to plot my boat directly on the waypoint where I caught the fish in practice. A lot of times I like to start about 50 yards away, work my way up to the waypoint and then continue going. This actually proved to be very key because as I looked down at my Mega Live as I was approaching this area, I saw a couple fish, I fired my jerk bait up there and I caught a three pounder. This fish was a huge momentum boost to me. Again, I'm sorry, I do not have this on camera, but I do turn What's the camera size? on at this next fish right here. Four and a three like 2.4 or 204. Yeah, they're like he was sitting on the bottom, and uh, but I I, I I had to turn the thing, so I just cast it in his direction and then just worked it the way they've been liking. Just catch twenty, so we can get, get some hot biscuits. Yeah. This was the third keeper. This fish weighed 2.4 pounds and it gave me a lot of confidence that I was in the right area. Something that I absolutely love about bass fishing is how quick it can happen when you get in the right area. I had just spent almost an hour fishing the wrong area and immediately within about 10 to 15 minutes of moving to this new area, all of a sudden we're closing the door on a limit. Oh my God. Gosh. Do you see him right there? I think I got to back up. They were coming in hot. Yep. Doesn't feel big, huge, but 
Well, it's actually a decent one. I think they might want like a different cadence. Got it? Good. Two fifty three. Yep. Feels small. Probably keeper though. Man, he hit it like a toad. Well, I'm not going to weigh him. <laughs> that is five, right? Yeah. Good work, Siege. <laughs> As you can see right here, my partner actually caught our limit fish, which always just feels good in a tournament. There he is. I see you. I see you. I hear you. Yep. Come on. Oh my gosh. You got to be kidding me. Well, at least call out that one, huh? Dude, he knocked like seven feet of slack in it. I thought he was going to be big. So did I. Did you see that though? I saw that fish at like 75. So we actually spent a pretty good amount of time in this area throwing the jerk bait, throwing the worm, and we caught a lot of fish, but our size was definitely going down. The first couple of fish that we had caught here were decent fish, but then our size really started to go down. Now from there, I decided to run over to the stretch of grass where I had broken off that four pounder in practice. But every time I went by this spot during the tournament day, literally every single time, there was always a boat sitting right on this spot so during the course of the entire day i was never able to fish this area now i wanted to butt in real quick because something really important just happened while we were fishing that if you didn't see it or didn't pick up on it i think it can really help you especially if you are a team tournament fisherman to actually do better in tournaments and if you noticed anytime i caught a fish my partner actually more or less handled that fish. He would take it off the hook, he would weigh it, he would tag it, he would put it in the live well. Anytime he caught a fish, I do the exact same thing for him. And this is actually a strategy that we have used a lot over the last couple of years. And there have been so many times we're using this, we call it the bass caddy strategy, will really help you to do better in tournaments. And the reason being, anytime one of us catches a fish in a tournament, if we are in shallow water, we put the raptors down. If we're in deeper water, we hit spot lock on the Ultrex. Now the person who caught that fish generally knows kind of the lineup and kind of exactly where they caught that fish. So as soon as we get that fish in the boat, it's really important to get your lure right back out to exactly where you caught that fish as soon as you can. And this is because a lot of times fish will get in a really small area. You will have a group, even a large school of fish in a very small area. And the person who just caught that fish knows exactly how that fish wanted the bait. And he also knows exactly where that fish is. So this is something we have done a lot. And 
There have been multiple times out there on the water where literally one person sitting there catching fish back to back to back to back and the other person is just sitting there unhooking them, weighing them, calling them, getting them all organized in our live well. So if you are a team tournament fisherman, this is something that I really highly suggest. It's something that's so simple, but it really helps us to kind of catch a lot of fish. We always like to say, let the hot hand fish. If I'm catching them really good, then just keep letting me fish. If he's catching them really good, then I have to let him fish because he knows the exact cadence, the exact right area to catch more. Now, speaking of my partner catching fish, another fish catch that I didn't get on video because I had to use batteries this day instead of my wired battery pack, we moved to another small little gut and my partner caught a 2.25 pound fish, which called out another fish and gave us right around that 12 pound mark. So we moved to a lot of different areas. We caught a lot of fish, but they were all a lot smaller. So we decided to do something a little bit different and move up shallow. We then proceeded to fish some really shallow water for a couple of hours. Sometimes I have seen that even though it's really cold out, that bass will move up shallow when it is cloudy. So we had fished a couple of areas with a floating worm and a swim bait in really shallow water without any success. Now towards the end of the day, the sun kind of started to come out and it actually started to get fairly warm. So I decided to run to those dead pad stems that I had found during practice. Even though I had only caught one small keeper here, again, I thought that maybe some bigger females might start moving up into these pad stems to start spawning. Now, if there's any regret that I had during this tournament, it is that that I spent way too much time in this shallow water and around these pad stems. Even though I had started to catch a few dinks around this area, I really wish I would have spent that entire time fishing other grass lines, points, even areas that I didn't catch fish in during practice. Now the very last point that I wanted to hit in the day was that point where I'd caught one keeper during practice and then had one absolutely obliterate a chatterbait. And with about 20 minutes to go in the day, I moved to that area and I had this bite within about five seconds of being there. Now it is really hard to tell right now, but this was actually a really good bite. I actually got a good piece of this fish and it absolutely felt like one of those ones that I really needed to catch. It felt like a really big one. After being here for another 10 minutes or so and catching a small keeper that didn't help us, all of a sudden I hear a hook set from the back of the boat. I look back and my partner's rod is doubled over. At first I didn't know that this bass was a good one until it got close and then I ran down, grabbed the net and netted it. Oh, yeah. Let's go. Let's go, dude. I think he was that freaking big. Get back out there. Good job, bud. Look at that. That's like maybe the biggest one of the day. 3.76. That gives us 14. Good freaking job, see. This ended up being our best fish of the day, which was a 3.76 pounder and pushed us over the 14 pound mark for the day. I really wish I had given myself more time to fish this area because after losing that one fish that I did and my partner catching one near four pounds, I felt that this area was holding the right quality that we really needed to be catching. All in all, it was a fun day fishing a lake that I had very little experience on and we ended up in 17th place out of about 65 boats in seven spots out of getting a check. The weights ended up being extremely tight. Third place was actually just 16.8 pounds, which was only two and a half pounds more than what we had. This really goes to show you why execution is so important in tournament fishing. Sometimes just one missed fish can mean the difference between getting a good size check or not cashing at all. I hope that you guys enjoyed this video. I hope that it helped you to learn something. If you enjoy me breaking down bodies of water. I did another video right here where I attacked a body of water that I had never been to. I had five hours to fish it. And if you like this video, I think you will like this one as well. Please comment below, subscribe, and I'll see you guys in the next video.